guys it is another beautiful day in middle tennessee and i'm starting on my next project here now this is a late 70s early 80s cb 750 i believe it's a honda 750 cc kind of a in between a sport and a street bike this is owned by my buddy reggie he bought it gosh um at least two and a half years ago and he did a little bit of work to it he pulled the carburetors off took off the battery he rebuilt the carbs but never got them back on because of the temperamental rubber gaskets between the uh, cylinder head and carbs that can be really annoying he did give me a set of new ones to install he wants to turn this into a cafe racer style bike so we went ahead and bought a few little odds and ends off of ebay we've got a cafe racer style seat the single headlight this little doohickey that welds onto the rear end a couple of clamp on handlebars to give it that kind of low mean look and then uh, i've got the fuel tank it's up in the other garage so first things first the battery is two years old but it still had 11 and a half volts so i've got it hooked up to my charger here to see if we can give it a little bit of a boost hopefully that still works and then these new gaskets i'll get these installed put the carburetor on and then hopefully it'll fire right up there's a little bit of an electrical issue here. You can see the wires are just cut. I don't know exactly where they go. I see that, that a couple of them do go to what would be like a starter solenoid right here. So we might have to bypass that. Maybe go on the old internet and see if I can find a wiring schematic. But it should be pretty quick work to at least get that running. So that's what I'm going to try and do right now. All right, guys, I've got all these rubber gaskets on here. If you notice at the top, they're labeled one, two, three and four which is nice uh, the numbers are supposed to be facing straight up so you can see it makes a nice even line they're all just a little bit different so if i didn't notice that boy that would have been difficult to install i was getting ready to put the carburetor on next and i was looking at this fuel inlet and it just kind of looked like it was in the wrong place the carburetor sits this way so it didn't make sense to me why the fuel inlet would be coming in from the bottom it looks like this is interchangeable with this one these are just crossover tubes to equalize the fuel delivery to all of the carburetors so i'm going to go ahead and pull this carburetor off switch this over to this side and then fish it up to the top where it has this little bracket right here that I believe goes right there that way the fuel inlet is right here because the petcock on the fuel tank is on the left side so it ends up being right here and this ends up looking like just about the right length to then get that fuel hooked up so I'll switcheroo those and then I should be able to put the carburetor on before I do that though I'm going to tackle the electrical the battery's been charging for a little while I'm going to go ahead and throw it on here and then just crank it over with an open intake to just get the oil system all primed up and then make sure that everything is working before I put the carburetor and start the fuel system so let's get to it well this is clearly not the right battery look at how much room we've got there and then it's actually not even sitting on the bottom here i've got it all hooked up and i turned the key and it looks like we are getting at least some power so i'm going to go ahead and throw this gopro on the uh, tripod here and we'll see if it cranks over <laughs> Boy, you hear that little solenoid trying. All right, uh, let me see if I can hook up the jumper to it. It's gonna be a little bit tight. <sighs> so I just don't have a lot of room and I definitely don't wanna touch any metal to metal there. Let's see what I can do. Nice. Got good suction out of each one of the cylinders. Electronics seem to be hanging in there. I'm going to go ahead and measure the... Actually, I'll probably just look up the crank battery for this bike. Um, I may have to decode the VIN number to figure out what the heck this thing even is. We do have a little bit of a leak. Nothing too, too bad. It looks like uh, the electronics that come through right there if I'm not mistaken, there's usually a little rotor and a stator there in lieu of an alternator. So it has basically a built-in generator and uh, these little electronic connectors can sometimes fail over time just because the rubber gets all dry. So I'll look into that. 
Uh, otherwise, hey, we're hanging in there. Time to get these carburetors on. All right, so I have a spare fuel tank. This came off a generator that I installed on the pizza truck that lives in Illinois. And because of their stupid laws, the generator had to be powered by the same fuel source as the vehicle. So I had to scrap this fuel tank and have the generator powered by the truck, which left me with this empty one. Now I'm just gonna have to hook up the petcock here to the fuel source right here for these carburetors. I'm going to fill it up. Hopefully we're not gonna have any leaks. I'll give it an old taparooski on these bowls because they may be stuck. Uh, if the bowl is stuck open, we're gonna see fuel dribble out of the bottom here. Like I said, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, once I verify that it is not leaking, I'm gonna spray a little uh, WD-40 uh, into these carburetors to hopefully lube them up so that they're not all sticky wicky and then we'll see if this thing fires up. So let's get to it. That thing is yeah. wicked loud. Awesome, right? Dude, that is so cool. All right, we've got a couple leaks on this fuel tank. You can see where there's a little bit of rust residue. That's because it uh, came out of this little goobery weld we've got here, and then another one right here. So you can see somebody tried to repair it. The sealant would almost certainly seal those up because those are pinholes, but I just don't like the look of this here. So I'm gonna grind this all down, uh, get some nice metal to weld to, and then we'll seal it up properly. Right, guys the gas tank is all sealed up is it looking good I put it on the bike just so that I could get the rear seat mounted up against it I'm gonna pull the tank off give that to my buddy Reggie and then he'll film painting it he's doing something pretty cool I'd like you to see for this rear seat this is not for this bike this is off of something a little bit different so it doesn't line up exactly what I'm going to do on this little bracket right here or on these little bolts rather I'm gonna build a bracket that slips underneath the gas tank bracket so it holds the front nice and tight and then in the rear, I'm just going to have to drill a couple holes into the subframe here and then put the bolts in from the inside. Now for the back, I've got, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. I've got this that I'm going to go ahead and weld on and have it come out just a little bit past the seat. So this whole back section is going to get chopped off and replaced with this. And then in the front, what I'd like to do today is get these handlebars removed and then I've got these over here from a dirt bike that we're gonna end up, instead of mounting them this way, we're gonna end up flipping them backwards, mounting them this way to give it a really super low profile. So first things first, let's get this rear end marked up and chopped up.
All right, guys, so here's the gas tank from Reggie. I think it came out awesome. You've got the United States flag on one side and then the Brazilian flag on the other. And if you want, it kind of looks like the Mexican flag on top. Now, the next thing we have to do is the exhaust. I found a complete exhaust system for this, but it was like $300, and that does not fit into the junkyard style build that we're doing here. Now, the exhaust that's currently on it is a little bit goofy. You can see we've cut it right here. There is a type of muffler on this side. Basically, the exhaust goes in the one chamber in the center there, and then it goes into the bigger chamber and then finds its way out this little side pipe and then eventually exits right here. It will quiet it down, but not a ton. Now on this side, there is nothing at all. So I came up with a solution that I think will work, but most importantly, it's super cheap. So you can see I've already cut that there, and I've cut this one here. I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit farther to get rid of the internal muffler, and then we're basically building our own mufflers. So right here, I got these for, I think, $10 on Amazon, and then I've got this exhaust fiberglass material. I'm gonna cut that fiberglass material, wrap it around this, use some stainless steel zip ties to hold it in place, and then I'm gonna use this. This is an old header flange that I had just in a pile of used parts. I'm gonna weld this in like so, and then I'm gonna take the whole thing, slide it on like that, and then I'll seam weld it along the outside so you can then smooth it down, and then Reggie will polish these all up. It's like a $25 solution, to a $300 problem. And I think it'll be perfect. The only question that I've got is this center cap here. If we don't have that cap, you see some of the exhaust gases will go straight through the center and it might be a little bit too loud. If we do end up putting this cap in here and welding that shut, then all of the exhaust gases have to travel through the side and depending on how thick the fiberglass ends up around here, it might end up being too restrictive. So the plan is tack weld this up, tack it onto the bike, start it up, see how it sounds. If it's too loud, I'll end up putting the cap on as a restrictor. If it's not too loud, I'm gonna leave the cap off and then we'll take everything off again, give it to Reggie, and then have him polish it up, and then we're good to go. So let's get to it. So I wanted to show you guys, this is how I have the fiberglass set up. Basically, I stuff it in there and then I wrap it around and then I use that stainless steel zip tie on the outside to hold everything in. And it just barely squeezes inside of the factory housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in, do a tack weld here and here, just enough to hold it so that we can then fire up the vehicle, see how it sounds. It's probably not a bad idea to do one with the fiberglass and one without, and then we can do a side by side. So let's do that. See if this thing starts. Oh, I already put the fuel in there. No, I'm not even fuel for us. Oh, yeah? Do you want to for yourself? Drink? Alright, ready? Here we go. So there is a huge difference between the exhaust on this side with the fiberglass and on the other side without it. Um, let me see if I can get the sound set up. So this is the side that has the fiberglass. I'm gonna fire it up. And now this is the side without. Let me pack that with the fiberglass and then uh, fire it back up again. 
All right, I've got the fiberglass in there. Let's see how it sounds now. I've got the new throttle installed. I absolutely love it, except for the very tip right here. If you notice, the ferrule that's on here is just very small, and when I try and route it into the carburetor, it doesn't want to fit because this is what the original one looks like. Much bigger. So my plan is, I'm gonna cut this wire off, I'm gonna drill a hole through the center, and then I'm gonna cut a nice little line through it so that I can fit the old ferrule into the new one, and then I'm gonna solder it up so that it holds strong. I don't know if it's gonna work. Let's give it a shot.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.